Edinburgh. Paradise for tourists from all across the globe. Thanks to its delicious delicacies, its sporting experiences, and its historic landmarks. The people of Edinburgh, especially Leithers, love their sports. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt that Edinburgh has always been a sporting hotbed. Clubs across the city, like Hearts, <laughs> like Hibs, like Bonnie Rig, and he's still a free. Young's header and Kerr Young, and like Edinburgh City, <laughs> we're having to modernise. Just over a week until the deadline for any interested parties looking to buy Heart of Midlothian. Black Knights Football Club uh, Group can now acquire a 25% stake for a £6 million investment. But one club is sticking to their roots. If they can be successful along the way, of course they would want that, but I think the main thing is that they're getting guys out of the house. This is the Leith Athletic story, and this is how to persevere. Leith Athletic have made themselves one of the best developers of youth talent in the Edinburgh footballing landscape. To dive into Leith Athletic's history, I have come to where it all began to meet the man who started it all. My name's Jeff Friedman and I'm the founder member of Leith Athletic going away back to 1996. Many, many years ago, a long time ago, I used to work in a place called Miller's Foundry and there was a few old guys for Leith there. Old guys now being my age now, but I was a young man then. And um, they used to harp on about Leith Athletic going away back. The first Leith Athletic um, that we know from 1887 um, was a merger between two football clubs that existed already called Royal Oak Football Club and Thistle Football Club and they came together that year. And they played, as I say, they played in the leagues with Hibs and Hearts and Rangers and Celtic, all the, the teams. Football was quite strong in Edinburgh. You had two large teams in Hearts and Hibs and you also had St Bernard's as well, who were becoming a sort of third force within the city. Um, Leith Athletic had done quite well as a scratch side, entering without really much portfolio. Big support, um, you know, done well, won a few trophies at that level. In some of their early years, causing um, a few big results, and they also managed to attract a friendly match against Preston North End, in which they beat Preston 3-1 at that point. But. Uh, the problem was that the, the grounds to play in. In a, a capital city where land is at a premium in general, and as the city expanded due to the Industrial Revolution, which was still happening in the late Victorian era, that would have meant that land which previously was green and was available to play sport on and use for recreational purposes was being bought for housing or for factories. I always caught up with them that they couldn't actually have a stadium for their own. Another reason it would have been the emergence of Hearts and Hibs as the big clubs within Edinburgh and society in general. So. Hearts were well established in Gorgie in the west and Hibs were becoming established in Leith and that area in the northeast of Edinburgh. Uh, with Leith Athletic playing at Bank Park which became Beechwood Park in 1895, they were there from 1891 onwards. That was very, very close to the proximity of the modern Easter Road Stadium and uh, thus especially in later years you would have struggled in terms of getting crowds to come and watch Leith Athletic when Hibs were doing well and were successful. Hibs was a very easy draw with success. So unfortunately they went defunct in 1955. Mm. Um, so there was nothing before, after that. So we decided, in, well I decided in 1996 to get the name resurrected. And from the ashes of the football club that collapsed in the 1950s, Ger Freeman reformed the club in 1996 with a burning passion to help his community and the children of Leith. First and foremost, I started a club to get the kids off the streets. So, and the story is with that is that I was walking down Lock End Road in early 96 with my kids to come down the links here to play football. And there was a lot of kids outside the chip shop at Lock End Road and they were all sort of hanging about. And I got quite annoyed because we couldn't get past them. So I went down the links with my boys, they were um, sort of 11 and 8 at the time. And then when I went home, I realised, I thought, why are they all hanging about the chip shop? And I realised I had absolutely nothing to do. 
And I thought, no, that's not good enough, you know, that's a shame that they don't have anywhere to go. So I decided, believe it or not, that night I'm going to start a football team down the links. While their cause to help their community is noble, Leith Athletic have struggled across their history financially. In clubs that we're playing against, I've got massive budgets to give players wages. <laughs> well, that's something that obviously is hard for us. We're still trying to build up that, you know, momentum and, you know, establish ourselves properly. I run the cash side in the first team, so I don't have, um, I don't have any, hardly any money to give the players, but a lot of them come back. A lot of them come back because they love the club and they've played when they're younger and they've maybe went away and earned a few quid and they come back to us. So that's something that we can take pride in as a club. Jerry's support for the club has not gone unrecognised from his family and his coaches. Jerry's a great guy. Um, Me and my dad, we've got, um, we're really similar, so we do tend to clash quite a lot, if anybody that knows us personally, we do. Um, but I've seen how good, you know, my dad's been with, you know, previous players. Where's his, where's his uh, heart on his sleeve kind of guy? Even guys that he coached 20 odd years ago, you know, they still speak so highly of my dad. So it's been good to, you know, um, you know learn from him how to, really how to treat people. When I started, it was always all about getting the kids off the streets. And it's still the same 20 years later. Things don't change. You weren't just a football coach then, you were a, you, you, a dad on a Sunday, you know. And so, I mean, my wife, for example, when Daz used to play for me, my wife used to, have, we used to have 16 in our house on a Sunday morning, my wife making them breakfast before we played a game. And a lot of them never had that, you know. They never had that sort of family, family feeling. And that was a ma marvellous bonus for us to do that. While glory is not the main objective for Leith Athletic, they have still had their fair share of triumphs within Edinburgh and beyond. The club has had many great achievements in its time, but perhaps their greatest of all was their under-12 Scottish Cup win in 2001, where they went to Hamden with a team of 11 Leithers. So we went to play Rangers, and the first time the Scottish Cup at youth level had been played at Hamden, and never got to be, it used to play at Airdrie, but the game was getting done, so we played the game at Hamden, which is massive. If you were a betting man, we would probably be 101 year money, because they had never lost the game all season. So we got to Hamden, and um, we sat at the steps at Hamden and we all, all the boys had their tracksuits on and whatever, eh? but just litters, you know, and Rangers turned up with their shirts and ties on and whatever, and uh, the, the coach made a fatal mistake, the Rangers coach, because a, re a captain called John Grant, who, uh, wonderful wee lad, well, no wee lad now, he's 37 year old, uh, his kids are here, so the coach was being very patronising, so we've got this on tape, I've got a three hour tape, my house, the whole game was on tape, and uh, the Rangers coach said to me, you the captain, Sonny? And he says, I am John, I'm the captain. He says, just enjoy the day. Very patronising. So John Grant, I'll not swear here because I've got on here. John Grant turned into all the boys, they're only 11, 12 year old, and turned and says, that effer thinks we're here to be beat. My coach, the coaches, we Gibby Newton and uh, Mark Patterson, didn't even have to do a team talk in addressing them. Even at a young age, you know, the, the bond that the club had, you know, my team was really successful and we had a really good team. And it was amazing to see the, the, the team sheets because every one of our players, there were 16 players that day, everyone stayed within two miles of this building where we stand now. Two miles, everyone. Furthest away was Portobello. So we're all later, a couple of Portobello boys and whatever. And when we seen the Rangers team sheet, they were all over Scotland because they were now going to be playing Celtic and Hibs and that that season. And they were Aberdeen and Berwick and all over, everywhere. And we had 16 boys here, two miles away. We actually won the Scottish Cup um, at Hamden. We beat Rangers at Hamden. Um, we beat them in the Scottish Cup final. And it was a wonderful thing to see that Leith Athletic 2, Glasgow Rangers 1, showing up at Hamden. Their triumph at Hamden has intrigued me. Their underdog story is truly inspiring. There's a perfect balance between community ventures and glory. While most of their players won't reach the heights of professional football, they have still developed essential life skills. But what about the few who have made it? What has Leith Athletic done for them? My name's Darren McGregor. Started off at Leith Athletic Boys Club. Went on to Cowden Beef, Arniston Rangers. Back to Cowden Beef. Then ended up at St Mirren. Then went to Rangers. Finished my career at Hibs. And I'm now the Hibs Under 18s coach. Like many kids in Leith, I, I, I predominantly played football on any bit of grass you could get. And I was there till 
I think I was actually there till under 19s, first year 19 before I left, so that, that, that's, that's how it all began. Leith Athletic was a great club, still a great club to be at. They facilitated lots of things for us, whether it be trips away, games on a Saturday, social functions, we play the year awards and stuff. So these are all things that as you grow older, you, you, and I, me now having kids and them liking football, you can appreciate that they, they're the building blocks for, for you being a successful person. Uh, listen, Jer's, Jer's a top man. He was always about and always wanting to help out, always wanting to, uh, just always there, just a mainstay of Leith. And I think he still does his bit now. And it's just, it's great to see him being there that long and the consistency that he showed and listen, Leith Athletics are a really big club and it's facilitated a lot of professional teams with, with players so Jerry's obviously got a big hand in that as well which is great. And I, remember, I remember most of my coaches, a lot of them were, were volunteers that either their sons played or they just had a close connection with Leith and you learn little things along the way. I mean it's nothing compared to what is now in terms of pre-academies and all your professional clubs three, four times a week they're training like I think we were only twice a week, but it just gives you that it gives you that springboard and the foundations to to be to be a football player. Speaking to Darren has made me realise that Jer's passion to help the community has not only been instilled in me, but every person that has been touched by the club. Darren returned to Leith Athletic in twenty twenty one as an ambassador and he clearly appreciates the club's help in his career. The current first team has been in fine form, not losing in nine games, but an East of Scotland Cup tie could derail them. It was time to round up my look at the arduous yet rewarding past of Leith Athletic and see if the club's first team can live by the club's motto, persevere. We can't talk about Leith Athletic without actually seeing Leith Athletic, so I've come along to Meadowbank Stadium to watch their cup game against Armadale Thistle. <laughs> We start off as a better side, but it's, uh, Armadale's gone one 0 up, and it's been a, a bit, a bit stronger for Armadale right now. So, see what happens. It's uh, two 0 here at Meadowbank uh, to Armadale, and. Uh, it's, it's not looking great for Leith um, with the the left, you know, the right hand side's being bombarded quite a lot. But it's uh, just hope the motto persevere comes through. After a difficult first half, it was becoming apparent that I wasn't the good luck charm I was hoping to be for Leith Athletic, as Leith were struggling against a side they really should be winning comfortably against. Armadale were happy to sit back and soak up the pressure as Leith's frustration was apparent. The goals weren't coming and something needed to change quickly. As the players emerged from the dressing room, there was a different attitude about this side as they approach the field with more confidence and more aggression.
uh, least of uh, they pull it back. It's 2-1 now. They're really pushing forward. Their attacking has got a lot better than in the first half. I know there's been a lot of injury crises within the club, but uh, they're doing they're doing all right. But really need to get pushing now. And the rain's coming down again, so we'll see how it goes from here. Now. Uh, I am not really prepared for this and I've, I don't know if I was prepared for that that was uh, something else uh, the comeback is really on and like I said it before and I've said it time and time again this is what the club's all about this is perseverance There we are, that's it, that's 2-2 for the final whistle, but we are heading to extra time. There was an altercation just before the final whistle there, so I'm not sure exactly what happened. That's it. That's it done. That's a persevere spirit right there. Right. It's a really good game. It's really solid from the Le uh, Leeds Athletic team. And uh, aye, that's them just going back. And that's them through to the next round. And that's exactly what you need. Well done, man. The club have shown what perseverance is all about and made me reflect on what that word means to me and the club itself. The club's motto is persevere. And that word can firmly be applied to leithers. So let's find out what Leith has to say about that word and what it means to them. You, you don't give up, you keep going, you keep fighting, and you even just now, like I was saying, uh, we're having a sort of difficult period just now, and I probably say it a lot to my guys as well, you know, it's the, the motto of the club, you persevere. It, it can't always be good, it's like everything in life, it can't, never, nothing in life is just plain sailing. You've got to keep persevering, you've got to keep going on and keep continuing, keep working hard. To stick it out when the cause may seem lost, when all others have given up hope, and when it seems like there may be no reward whatsoever, carrying on in the face of everything and coming out on top. Even coming up through and you, you had coaches like Jer and stuff, um, that's what they would always bang on to you about the persevering and, and showing that grit and resilience to play for Leaf. Waking up every day and, and applying yourself to the fullest. So whether that be when I was working part time, I was going to the, I was going to the gym before before work. I was doing an eight hour eight hour shift, and then I was going and I was training later at night. I was, I was playing on a Saturday and working on a Sunday because I'd taken the day off on a Saturday. So just trying to be the best version of yourself every day. You know, Leith, Leith people are, are very proud people and. We we'll always say it, we we'll always say that when we have group chats with the coaches and whatever, if we're 2 nothing down and we win 3-2 or 4-2 or 5 nothing down and get back to 5-3 or, or still play the 90 minutes, you always say that's the least way, persevering.
My time with Leith Athletic has come to an end. And what I've learned from them is that they embody the spirit of Leith. They fight to the bare end and they support one another. While they might not have the finances or support of their professional counterparts here in Edinburgh, they do one thing better. They persevere. Persevere. That's it. To nothing down. No loss of the game in ten, and that's what happens here when you're lifting, you fight to the end.